Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. This is a Bally 8 ball that we've been working on. We already filmed a video where we were doing some of the electronic stuff, the electrical stuff on it. Uh, but we now are going to be working on the play field and it's pretty beat so we figured we'd film it and do a before and after. To a lot of people, they would not even save a play field like this. They'd part it out, it would be the end of this machine. But we're going to save it. We'll see if we can get it looking presentable. It won't look new. So if you're looking for a video of somebody making it look new, this is not it. We don't have the talent nor the time to make it look new. But we can definitely make it look a lot better than this. So let's see what we got going on. Down here is not too bad. Got lots of dirt ground into it. Got a bunch of the paint missing over here for whatever reason. There is some kind of something on the play field. I don't know if that's paint or, or what that is. And then the middle area, there is significant wear around all of the pool balls that needs to be touched up. Uh, the bank shot lane up here has significant wear around all of the inserts. It's not there's there's mylar circles around the. Uh, pop bumpers so they're not that bad significant wear on the spinner lane over here and then the top's pretty decent so kind of rough people we did another one a while back that I think some of these were completely worn off like there were some a couple of the balls were completely gone we saved that one so you can go look for that on our web on our uh, channel here if you want or you can just keep watching because we'll be doing the same to this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything off the play field. Um, well, not everything. I'm not going to take the pop bumpers off the play field. I'm going to take most of the posts and everything down to where we can clean it really well. And then uh, we'll see what we've got once everything's off of it. Here is what we're starting with with all of the dirt and grime in situ. Right? Hasn't been cleaned up yet at all. So, normally on a play field, if it's dirty, you can wax the dirt off. You can just use wax to clean it. You're not going to wax off filth like that, though. <laughs> so I'm going to use like a degreaser. You know, you can use 409 or anything, whatever you want. Uh, normally, you wouldn't use anything with water in it because it might... Um, mess up the finish or the the, the wood you know if it, if it soaks into the wood you might get some planking and stuff but come on folks look at this thing you can clean it with whatever you want it's already destroyed so I'm gonna clean it down and we'll see what it looks like uh, once I do my initial cleaning and get some of the dirt off so this is just after trying to clear off some of the grease I mean some of the grime and the dirt you can see that it uh, took off what must have been somebody's touch-up job on that <laughs> bare wood spot. So it's cleaned up just a little bit. So now I'm going to use a magic eraser and uh, rubbing alcohol and go to town on it. And this is going to take off even more of the paint around here, but it's going to get it as clean as possible. And so once you get it like that, then you can tell what you're actually starting with and what you need to repaint. So uh, we'll... Uh, get on it with the uh, with the magic eraser and see what see what decides to hold on so we scrub 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 scrubbed and got it as clean as we could whenever you do that with magic eraser it leaves this white haze all over everything so now you have to wipe it off again to wipe the the uh, magic eraser magic pixie dust off of it and then you'll finally be down to your bare wood that you're going to start with. Now, uh, there there might end up being some places I have to go over again or whatever, but this is probably about as good as the original paint is going to look. Now, whenever you clear coat it, um, it will make it look a little better. It ages it a little bit and kind of blends everything in, makes it all look kind of cool. But we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, but so the next thing is I need to wipe off the. Uh, magic eraser dust and then we'll finally get a look at what it looks like before we start doing the touch-up paint. 
So we wiped all of the magic eraser dust off of it, and so this is what we're starting with. Um, it's oh, and another thing. I've still got all the old light bulbs in it, and I turned it on just so that it looks you can see it in the um, camera a little bit better uh, whenever I'm filming it. But the the um, um, all of that needs to be replaced. If you leave those. If you leave the light bulbs in the socket when you're working on it, it keeps crap from falling down inside the sockets. You can take all that stuff off the playfield if you want to. Some people will uh, put like a little piece of tape in each one, but I just leave the old light bulbs in it. I'm going to replace them all anyway. Okay, so we're down to our bare art, and like I said, it's completely destroyed. So you have to start making decisions about how far are you going to go. The green is so bad, you could almost repaint all of it. But if I do, you're going to see that I repaint it all. <laughs> so you have to decide, do you want to repaint the whole thing to where it looks like a big coloring book? Or do you want to just try to repaint the spots that are uh, uh, that are worn down to wood? Or, I mean, what are you going to do? So we, we never try to make them look perfect. because, Like I mentioned before, we're not really capable of making it look perfect. And we don't have the time to make it look perfect. So I'm going to try to match the paint. Which, who knows. Sometimes whenever you have areas, maybe not that bad, but sometimes whenever you have areas where it's, where it's, uh, um, you've got just a little bit of, well, that's, not, that's a lot of wear, but whenever you've got, where some of it's still there and some of it's gone, if you've got a good color match, you can actually rub the paint on. So you can take like a paper towel or something and rub it on the play field and it'll stay on the parts that are bare wood and it'll come off of the parts that are um, paint. So we might try to rub some paint in some of the places up here instead of trying to paint it, but we're definitely going to have to paint the two big spots by the kickout lanes. And we're going to have to repaint the stuff in here. We're definitely going to have to repaint this green ball for the parts of that green ball. So the green is a complete damn mess. Um, the cream color is also a pretty big mess, but it's mainly contained to up there and around the balls. So all of this is the same cream color. So all of that needs to be repainted. Mm, mm, mm. We've even got some here that could stand to be repainted. Also, the arrows on this part. So, I mean, we've got we got a mess here, but we'll see what we can do. Um, I think I'll screw around with the green first. Why not do the biggest one first, right? Why not? So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bunch of acrylic paints, and I'm going to start mixing them together and try to get a green color that is similar to what we're seeing. Now, the place that you want the best color match is right here, where it's going to be right up against something that hasn't been painted. So the green down here might actually be different than the green up there because all of this is faded. And, um, some areas are more dirty than other areas. Some areas have been waxed more than other areas and just, you know, it's a big mess. Uh, so I'm going to try to match it down here. And then if it's off a little bit up there, it won't be as big of a deal because it's farther away from you. But we'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll get all my paints out and we'll start in trying to make a green that's anything like this. All right, so here's our first chance at color matching. So what I did was I took this bright green, which is Kelly green, good color. And then I mixed it. was That's two. See, Kelly green is two green, right? So I mixed in a little bit of light avocado. And I came up with my own concoction here. And I painted it on. And it's still wet, but it looks like it's going to be too green, you know? So we need to... Uh, um, I'm painting it on here because the paint is actually where uh, where the paint's worn down it's actually a little low so if you put a couple coats it actually looks better so I'm painting my first coat which won't be the finished color on there just to fill in the the uh, paint a little bit but anyway the it's probably going to be too green so what's the difference between it and this is it that that's brighter than this is that the only difference is it because that's lighter than this is it because that's darker than this? You have to figure all this out. To me, it looks like the the hue is off a little bit. Like it's a little bit... I don't know if this is maybe has a little more um, 
it's almost like a brown in it like it's a little it's darker but it's 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 not quite as vivid too you know so um so i'm gonna have to mess around it, it it might be a little bit more blue you know i might have to go a little, with a little bit more blue to get this so that's how you kind of mess with it you just kind of tinker with it and add a little bit of this a little bit of that until you get it where damn it looks pretty good but the other thing is you have to let it dry like it's still wet so it hasn't really dried to its final color yet uh, so I'm going to keep messing with it until I get it a little closer and then once I get it close we'll touch up all the little spots that need it so what do you think huh how's it look oh you can't see it from back here So I got the green really damn close, man. I got it really close. I don't know how I got it that close, but since I had it so close, I just touched up everywhere there was a little spot. I just put a little fleck. Now there's one variable here. When I clear it, you may be able to see every one of those little spots. I don't know. But it'll look a hell of a lot better than it did before. Can we agree on that? So everywhere there was a little spot I let me see if I can find some so I can zoom in on it yeah like here's a good uh, here's a good example so this area here is kind of worn so see how you can see the little green pock marks here and there you know so it's definitely not perfect it looks a, it looks a lot better from far away but and the little that bad the worst spot was right there yeah it's borderline but like I said we're working with the play field that most people would have thrown away but we're gonna make it ride one more time right okay so we did the green got it looking pretty good of course I have to do the black and I have all these other colors to do so uh, I think maybe the next one that we do is we have to get this kind of cream colored color fig figured out uh, because there's one two three four five six seven pool balls that need it there's a bunch of things up here that need it there's a lot of it over here that needs it and that's that that cream color is always an issue because originally that was white and it fades over the years and it fades to different levels of yellow all over the play field uh, some of it's from the lamps some of it's from just the paint yellows. Some of it's from wax. It just, here, here's a good example. So, I don't know how well that's gonna show up, but see the different colors? The color under the post isn't even necessarily the original color. So what do you touch up? Do you, do you paint it the original color? Do you paint it the yellowed color? So it's always kind of a, you just have to get it the best you can. I've seen there are guys out there that can fix screwed up spots on play fields and make them look perfect. I mean, you can't even tell. But I am not one of those guys, right? <laughs> we're just with a, a limited time frame and a limited budget. We're getting this machine uh, very respectful and play playable again. And then we're going to send it off into somebody's home game room. As a matter of fact, somebody's already bought it before we even have done this work. So hopefully they're happy with it whenever they get it. And I'm sure they will be. Uh, okay, so we, so we did the green. I think it came in pretty good. A lot of this was redone too, you know. A lot of that was screwed up. It's like that six ball. Okay, so this is where you stand to play. Can you tell if any of that six ball has been repainted? Because I didn't repaint the whole ball, just part of it. But if you if you zoom... Obviously, I haven't put the black ring around it, but if you look real close, you could tell it's been touched up. So whenever whenever I do the uh, clear coat, it may actually um, exaggerate all that. Like you may be able to see the the color difference uh, even more. But right now, I'm happy with it. So we'll mess with the cream tomorrow. Uh, but for you, it'll be right now. All right, so we're back at it. So I mixed up some 
buttermilk and I put a little yellow in it to make it a little more yellow than buttermilk and I've redone this part and this part but not that part or that part what do you think good match good enough match so it's all just the same thing you just so you can see from this angle all the little touch-up spots so it'll be interesting to see how that happens with the clear coat when you can't see the uh, when there's not light shining on it you can't see the the some of its matte the, the paints like matte finish and the uh, the originals got more sheen to it so the clear coat should hide that but we'll see but uh yeah so we're doing the cream color I'm gonna have to repaint pretty much most of this and then uh, touch up these arrows and then touch up these pull balls so that's next so I did a lot of the cream it's not perfect but mm, not better than it was and I inked in a lot of the black whenever you put the black lines in that really helps so you know I mean it's presentable as it is we're going to keep going though but um, you could potentially just do the black lines on most of this stuff and make everything look a lot better so I've got so many colors we've got left you can probably we can, the easiest way is probably just to tell by the ball so I've still got to do the burgundy this yellow orange combination that's two three four five six so I've got six colors left on the play field orange yellow burgundy blue and then there's three variations of that well two variations of that so this is really yellow with just orange spots on it and this is really blue with just orange spots on it. <laughs> Um, and so maybe next I do the uh, blue or the orange and then I'll just paint everything that needs orange all over the play field and be done with that move on move on move on very simple it's like a big coloring book okay folks so we finished it up it's not perfect but it's a lot better than it was maybe we should do it before and after but what I want to do is we're gonna we're, we put clear coat on it just in a rattle can spray paint clear coat um, and we're going to try to let that dry a little bit. It's been drying a day, but yeah, I mean you should let it dry a week if you can help it. But we probably won't let let it go that long. But uh, so we're going to let it dry a little bit, and we're going to go back to working on some of the boards. If you watched our last video, whenever we ended, we had just figured out that the main board was unsavable, wasn't going to happen. So we ordered a brand new MPU board. So we're going to pop that in and see if we can get this sucker to fire back to life. And then while we're waiting on the uh, paint to cure a little bit better, we'll uh, we'll start working on the, the whoops. So we'll put the MPU in. We'll start working on the lamp board. We'll work on the displays. Uh, we'll work on the bottom of the play field and get all of the lights to work and everything. Um, and then after, if after that takes a while, we'll uh, be ready to wax the play field and put all the stuff back on the top of it. So uh, we'll film some of that stuff. So here is the MPU board that we got from Marco. You've got four or five options whenever you are trying to fix that board. You can either fix it, ours kind of was pretty much unfixable, uh, or you could buy one that's repaired from somebody. It might cost you $100. Or you can buy this Alltech board, um, Alltech Systems, uh, which is about $200. But it is nice. And it works on pretty much all of the Bally games and all of the Stern games. So we're going to set it up and throw it in the cabinet. Now you need to, before you put this in, you need to make sure that your 5 volts is somewhere near 5 volts. So remember we checked ours and it was at 5.19 or something like that. Um, 
and then you have to tell the board which game that you want it to be because it's basically got all of the software of all the games stored on that chip and it tells you all that in this manual right so uh, before you plug in the ultimate MPU board uh, review table on the one on the last page of this manual to determine if the clock speed jumpers need to be changed for the game being selected the jumpers only need to be moved for the later model stern games so on this there are these two little jumpers here if that'll focus clock speed right so if you're if you have a Bally or Stern MPU 100 the jumpers are on the right if you have this Stern MPU 200 which is the later games you put the jumpers on the left this is one of the very first games that actually used the P, the, MP, the PCB I mean the um, that was a digital game so we're uh, we're leaving them set up for that. Uh, d d don't apply power until you've checked the five volts and the five volts a AC, right? Before plugging in the ultimate MPU board, get a flashlight to get a good look at the connectors that are hanging in the top left corner of the head of the machine. Uh, visual, visually inspect the cable for broken wires or bad pins. If you see any damage, you will need to repair this before continuing. Inspect the pins for corrosion. If you find any corrosion, further action may be necessary. Corroded pins could prevent your new board from working properly. So those those uh, wires that hang up here in the back box, um, remember the board had all the, the corrosion on it. it. It can spread over to those pins too, especially in this bottom left connector. So we'll check that out. We might have to repin it like we did the, the ones on the power supply. It's telling you to check your five volts like we did, right? And then power it up, and then you're trying to get it to... Uh, boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. So basically, we're to the point where we need to set up all of the dip switches. Okay. So on the back of it, it shows you which game, how to how to make it, whichever game you want. So you see the fourth game that they miss that they mentioned, which I guess this eight ball must have been the fourth game. You put the last two on, and so one is up. It also says one up here. So we're going to turn seven and eight on. Make sure all the other ones are down. Now to set it on free play on this, to place any of the ballet games in free play mode, just press the leftmost switch in the on position. So if we turn that on, we're now on free play. Pretty cool, right? Then turn off your credit display feature, which is either switch 20 or 27 of the game feature dip switches. I figured out one time that you have to do that. I thought, ah, screw it, I'll just leave it. You have to turn that off, at least it was my experience. I couldn't get one to work right, and then I figured out you got to turn this switch off too, with the the one that's in the manual. All right, uh, so the other stuff we don't have to worry about. So we got to turn off free play, and we have to set up all of these option switches. So on the original board, all of these switches told it how to do different things: to make it three ball or five ball, to make uh, uh, to change uh, the the uh, you know what some of the scoring does and things like that. So we need to set that up just for 8-ball. It can't tell you in this, in this book because it's different on every game. So we're going to look in the 8-ball manual and set those up. In the manual, it tells you what each of the 32 switches do. So you see it says credit display switch 20. Uh, credits displayed yes or no. I left that on one time, like I turned that on one time, and I think that made it where free play didn't work. You, would, you wouldn't think that's possible, but I'm, it took me forever to figure out figure that out. So I went through and I turned on some of the settings, like, uh, you know, I, I made sure that it was still on three ball, which is the switch off and blah, 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 right? So there was a thing on there. If you turn on switch eight, it makes it play tunes instead of uh, on the chime, instead of just uh, being boring. So I turned on eight. So you can see I turned on some of them. And then uh, there's a bunch of settings where it does either a liberal or conservative setting, which means it makes it either easy to win or I mean easier easier to get more points or harder to get points and so since you're playing three ball you want it to be easier to get points because you only have three balls now or you can set it on five ball and then you can set it up however you want but if it's on three balls 
we want it to be as easy as possible. Okay, so we're ready to pop it in the game. Uh, the only other thing to mention, and it's, it mentions it in the book, is sometimes, I've had one or two of these, they come and they were tested in another game or something like that, or if you've got it set up for one game, I can take this out of my eight ball, put it in another game, and you know just use one board to run several machines if I wanted to. That'd kind of suck, but you could do that. But to turn it into a different game, of course you change the dip switches, but before that you do that, you have to do this memory clear function. Place all the switches in the up position except switch one. I had a, a Flight 2000 one time that I put one in and it was giving me all kinds of trouble and then I did this memory clear function, reset it, put it back as a Flight 2000 and everything worked perfect. So we're going to pop it in the game and uh, I'll check that connector, make sure it's alright, and then we'll see if she'll boot up. So we've got it mounted up in there where it goes. I did have to replace some of the pins on that connector they looked pretty rough so I went ahead and replaced it and uh, I think we're ready now to try it so basically it's going to try to do the same thing that we tried on the other one in the other video you want it to get a quick flash I mean a quick flicker and then seven flashes I think on these though you can't hardly see the flicker so we'll just count for seven flashes one two three four five six seven oh I was off one. <laughs> there was a quick flicker, but it was more like just a flash. I don't know why they didn't ever just say, just make it eight flashes. All right, so none of our lights are working on the play field, but I think, if you remember from the first video, I think almost all of the bulbs are gone. And our displays are up and running. Uh-huh. This one here is a little rough. But the other four look decent, at least from this angle. All right, so I think we're doing our thing. So um, next thing I want to do is I'm going to pop, pop. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we do have, look, we've got a couple bulbs. <laughs> a couple came on, people. Let's see if it does it again. Yep, 12's on, 15's on. All right, yeah, literally, like, most of the bulbs are missing under the play field. So I think what I'll do is we'll turn it off, we'll pop the play field up, and then we'll go through each socket one by one and uh, check to make sure that they all have a nice bulb in it. So I have replaced every light bulb under the play field, checked everything out, and the sockets all seem fine, the wiring seems fine, but look what look at this pathetic thing here. I have five lights that work. The one ball, the seven ball, the twelve, the thirteen, and the fifteen. <laughs> Nothing else turns on. So, uh, and on the back box, there are some controlled lights that are on. These are, on, these are controlled, these are controlled, these are controlled. Uh, and I've got a few flickering. Player four, player three, and player one are flickering. Player two isn't. The high score to date isn't working. So, we've got uh, serious bulb problems. Also, if you try to put it in test by hitting the test switch, you can't get the lights to light up. I wonder I wonder if there is actually a test. Self test and clear and reset. I think if I hit this it will go into the test mode instead of the one on the play field. I mean on the point door. Yeah, okay, there we go. Alright, we got a few more. Oh, okay, so it's not as bad as I thought. But see how one, three, and four are flickering and doing weird stuff? blinking hmm okay hold on let's uh let's make a list let's make a list people all right so one player three player four player flicker two player is dead the high score to date thing wonder if I've got that right. The one at the top is dead. These are where I wrote down the ones that were good, uh, but it'll be easier to write down the, one, the ones that are bad. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. 
10, 11, 14 are all dead. 15 ball is dead. 6 and 14 ball are dead. Two times and five times are dead. Um, the right, <laughs> the right bank shot arrow. is dead. 600 and 5,000 is dead. Uh, and balls 2 and 10 are dead. Mm. That's pretty rough, people. Okay, so we're going to look in the schematics and see uh, what those all have in common. So this is the schematic of the light board. So the way it works is on one of the connectors the, the, the um, game board sends four address signals and four lamp data signals to the lamp board. The uh, address signals go to all four chips. There are four main chips on the lamp board. The data signals each go to one of the four chips. Right, So PDO turns on this chip, PD1 turns on this chip, PD2 turns on this chip, PD3 turns on this chip. So that's how it works. So you've got four address signals and four lamp data signals. And then you've got a strobe that makes it all work. Okay, so some of our lights are working. So we know that the strobe's working. And we know at least some of the addresses and some of the data is working. Right. So if you go down to this next one, it tells you. So hope you don't get dizzy. <laughs> So notice here that this top set of resistors and transistors are coming out of one chip, and then there's another set for a second chip, there's another set for a third chip, and there's another set for the fourth and final chip. So whenever you come down here, once again, uh, that's what we've got going on. So this is one set, this is a second, this is the second chip. Whoa, where's my other? Oh come on! Part of the, part of the. Uh, how did that happen? Oh, it was just a screw up <laughs> with uh, with Adobe. Come on, Adobe, get your stuff together. Come on. All right, so this is the first chip. This is the second chip. This is the third chip. This is the fourth chip. So whenever you've got like a ton of lights out. You can figure out what's going on by looking at the at what's missing, right? So we've got this list here. So this is the list we made of all of the ones that are missing. So uh, the the so there were these ones here are all the ones in the triangle, the rack, and these this two ten six fourteen and fifteen were the actual balls on the playfield where there's an actual ball painted up in various places on a play field. So you see on this one connector here, there's ball, there's the one ball which is lit up, the five ball which is lit up, the nine ball which is lit up, and the 13 ball which is lit up. Those are all working. Alley one, so the alley was the six bonus lines, uh, lights that are on the right side, right? So I wrote down that bonus 605,000 were out, but they don't they don't label them like that in the manual. They label them in order. So alley number one was working, and alley number five was working. All right, and see in the rack they've got this little triangle. Oop. In the rack, ball number one is one of the ones that's lighting up. Ball number five is not lighting up, so we might have an issue there. Ball number nine is also not lighting up. Ball number thirteen is lighting up. All right, so we got five and nine aren't lighting up, but that could be the socket, or it could be just this one little transistor over here, you know, that does them. Uh, the super bonus was lighting up. Uh, the two ball did not light up. The six ball did not light up. The ten ball did not light up. The fourteen ball did not light up. Alley number two did not light up. Alley number six did not light up. 
The second ball in the rack did not light up. The sixth ball in the rack did not light up. The tenth ball in the rack did not light up. The fourteen ball in the rack did not light up. The seven ball did light up. And the five time five X did not light up. <laughs> so look real careful at that. All of these are dead and they all come from this second chip, right? And then the seven ball works, but it comes from way down here on the third chip, right? And then this five X did not work. But if you look, it also comes from the second chip. So in other words, this second chip is not working at all. Right, and then there's some various other ones too. So let's see here. The same player, uh, same player shoots again. I believe was working. Ball in play was working. That's the one above the uh, the credits, I believe. Uh, one player. I don't think I changed that light bulb, so I'm not sure about that. One first player up. I think one player, so first player up, I think, is the one next to the score. That's the one that was flickering. And it's coming from transistor Q6, which is the last transistor at the bottom of the first chip. Um, bu 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 high score to date was not working, and it's coming from the second chip. The two player, which is the light... Um, the little light bulb down at the bottom. I didn't. Cha I didn't change the one, two, three, or four player light bulbs. So I don't know about that. But the one and the two were off. So uh, game over was working, and it comes from the third chip. The third player uh, was one of the ones that was flickering. Looked like crap. It comes from the third chip. Um, the tilt was working. The four player. Uh, which one was the one that was out? The second player was dead. The two player up was dead, which comes from the second chip. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. All right. And then so down here, the three ball um, was not working. The seven ball was, oh, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. The three ball was working. The seven ball was working. The 11 ball was working. Uh, the 15 ball was not working coming from the third chip alley number three was working uh, the outlane special was working the three in the rack was not working the 11 in the rack so as you can see we just got a big freaking mess and one of the problems is that this second chip is bad so what I'm gonna do first is this second chip can completely not work if this uh, PD1 line drops out so if that PD1 line disappeared like it had a bad connection this chip wouldn't work at all. So that could be the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the connection on that, which is pin 6, and see if it's good. And then I'm also going to look at the connection on the MPU board because if that well, the MPU board's brand new, but remember the connectors, some of them were, had corrosion damage. So I'm going to repin these these well, I guess these eight, these eight data lines on the MPU board and I'm going to look at them where they plug into the lamp board too. And then I'm going to turn it back on and see if it's just as bad. If it's still all screwed up, uh, then we know that this chip's bad on the on the lamp board, and we got a bunch of other um, transistors probably bad too. So we're probably just going to swap a different lamp board in. The lamp boards are fairly inexpensive. If you go look on eBay right now in 2019, you can buy those for about fifteen dollars. I'm not going to go buy one because I've got like ten of them. That you you end up with new lamp boards all I mean extra lamp boards all the time. But uh, the first thing, I'm, like I said, I'm going to go repin these connectors and then see if it stays the same. If I can't get this chip to come on at all, we're not even going to try to fix that board. We're just going to try a different one in it. Checking out the connectors, they were fine. If you look carefully, you can see what happened. So here's the connectors. They look fine. There's really no corrosion on the connectors, and the plugs look fine. But the middle of the board is destroyed. And the reason for that is because when it's mounted in the machine, it's right underneath that battery. So that battery leaked its evil crap all over this board. And you can see that the chips are screwed up, the transistors are screwed up. If you look on the back, whoop, lots of places that are not doing too good. So, 
that board is done. So I'm going to get another one. We'll check uh, the transistors on it. Uh, basically, you can check uh, the legs with each other and see if you find one that tests different than the other ones with a diode check on your multimeter. Same with these. And uh, if everything seems fine, we'll pop it in there and uh, see if that does this better. One of the chip, the chip that was not working at all, let's see if we can figure out what do they call that chip that wasn't working at all. It is the second chip U2, it says. Octung Baby, that's the one. So uh, it was probably, if this chip works in with that chip, that, I'm sure that was probably the problem. But I'll uh, I'll grab the other uh, another board. We'll resolder the backs of the connectors like we always do. Check the transistors and then pop it in and see what kind of result we get from that. Okay, so we have our other board. I found a nice clean one that I installed in there, and it had one or two bad transistors, but uh, everything went good. There's different types. So there's like that. That one's a little bigger. This is uh, the type that was in it, a little smaller. Um, they all do the same thing, so it doesn't matter. The uh, We got every light bulb working. It's harder to tell in the daytime, but all the computer controlled lights are working. And uh, you can see all the ones on the uh, insert R2. I still need to replace uh, all of the general illumination bulbs. And I'm still getting the thing where the one, two, three, and four twinkle a little bit, but we're going to act like that's normal because uh, I don't think it'll hurt anything. They don't ever flash. They just turn on or off. So. And also, this one's working. You just can't see it because it's green. It's real dark, this one, too. But uh, we got it all going. A lot of the problem on some of them was sockets and stuff. So I went through the bottom and replaced a bunch of sockets. This is that weird one that they had hacked in there. If you saw that in the first video, um, we had a lot of them just like this where they just would not work. A little bit too corroded. So we swapped a bunch of those with brand new ones. right? So we're now to the point where we've got all of the bulbs working. The game is up and in a track. Well, it's not in a track mode now. It's in test mode. But... The game is booting up into a track mode, so I think we will stop this video here. And we'll uh, we'll do a last one showing how we finish up the last little bit of it, putting all the stuff back on the play field. We still need to mess with the displays, and then we need to play it. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll end it here. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. And uh, make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film all this for you, because it would go so much faster if we didn't do that, but we're thinking about you right so the least you can do is give us a thumbs up right leave your comments below and we will see you on the next video